-hmm. You know, if, if, if you look at um, the, the, the victories and failures of the civil rights movement um, and its litigation strategy in the court, I think where it succeeded was to vest formal rights uh, in uh, previously dispossessed peoples so that uh, I would now have the right to vote, I would now be able to sit at a lunch counter and, and order, and as long as I could pay for it, I'd be okay. Uh, but the Supreme Court never ventured into the issues of redistribution of wealth uh, and sort of more basic issues of political and, and, and uh, economic justice in the society. And uh, uh, to that extent, as radical as I think people tried to characterize the Warren Court, uh, it wasn't that radical. It, it didn't break free from the essential constraints that were placed uh, uh, by the Founding Fathers in the Constitution, at least as it's been interpreted, and Warren Court interpreted it in the same way, that, that generally the Constitution is a charter of negative liberties, says what the states can't do to you, says what the federal government can't do to you, but it doesn't say what the federal government or the state government must do on your behalf. Uh, and that hasn't shifted, and one of the, uh, I think, uh, the tragedies of the civil rights movement was um, because the civil rights movement became so court focused uh, I think that there was a tendency to lose track of the political and community organizing and, and activities on the ground that are able to put together the actual coalitions of power through which you bring about redistributive uh, change uh, and uh, in some ways we still suffer from that <laughs>